gotten some more interesting information pertaining to jump points from the latest uh, Star Citizen Live. Let's see what we got. Before we get into this video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for the Drake Cutter Nerd Tour Spay. All you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of September. Let's continue. All right, guys. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Um, we're just going straight into it. They did have a Star Citizen Live pertaining to jump points uh, this past uh, a week. And uh, um, the very first question here says... Uh, Will players with crime stats be allowed to jump at the pyro jump gates? And their answer was, if you have a crime stat 3, ATC will not allow you to jump through the jump point. That check is on both sides. Okay, which which is fair. I get it because AT, because um, uh, UEE is controlling that uh, jump gate. So now I'm curious to see um, if it's uh, jumping between uh two lawless systems i don't think those checks will be in place but because uee controls stanton so they they're controlling both sides of the border essentially so which kind of makes sense the next question was how do you clear your crime stat in pyro it says crime stats will be only obtained around the jump point in pyro so essentially once you're within the system itself outside of that area you can do whatever you want and your crimes are not being um uh recorded so which is uh, good for the pirates okay so um and it continues to say surrender to the law enforcement faction and end up in jail back in stanton uh we're still working on this so i guess that's a quick way to get <laughs> into stanton if you serve some jail time if you're from pyro and you have a crime stat the very next question is will the jump through the jump point consume quantum fuel if yes how much they respond with using the permanent jump point will use quantum fuel when you start attuning with the jump point it will let you know how much fuel you need so now based on how they responded to this does that mean using the transient jump points doesn't take consume quantum fuel so i think they have a few things that they need to work on in terms of how um, both will uh, operate all right, so the next question is what's uh, stopping us from falling out of the jump tunnel and arriving earlier in the other star system? And they respond with, in order to fall out, you need to take enough damage. Your module need to lose integrity. And if you survive that exit, you are going to be where you, you are not going to be where you want to go. Interesting. I think I can see people using it and deliberately trying to fail the jump as long as they've, they've patched the 50% threshold of crossing over to Pyro uh, just to avoid uh, pirates. I think I, I think that should also be an option if people just want to avoid that area altogether because I can see pirates hanging around there anyways. But uh, let's let's see how this turns out once we have our hands on the patch okay so the next question says how difficult are the jump tunnels uh supposed to be and they respond with for the uh permanent jump points they are large enough to be stable so they're rather reliable there is the difficulty to every jump tunnel you have to fly in there are turbulences some obstacles uh, smaller ships will have more turbulence, but they will have an easier time maneuvering in these jump tunnels. It is a different experience depending on the ship. Jump tunnels are procedurally generated. It won't be too difficult for 4.0, but you will fail if you are not cautious enough. Interesting. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like the fact that there's a challenge to it. Uh, their next question was how will the different jump drives affect jump point gameplay and they, they answer with your jump drive will help you stay aligned in the jump tunnel different jump drives will have various effects on maneuvering and such interesting okay okay that's that's pretty interesting um the next question is why have we decided to group everybody right in one place right in front of the jump point and have them sitting there waiting for their turn and they respond with it's a physical doorway in space you can only enter through one way you don't have to sit there you can switch back to combat mode while you're in the queue and fly through as long as you stay within the jump point area 
each thing. Okay. Good, good. So in combat mode, so I wonder this how this works, right? If you can switch to the combat mode, that means you can have the shields up at that point. Is that what that means? I'm curious to see. Uh, because I know in quantum mode, your shields go down at that point. So I'm not uh, sure um, how this will be. Okay. They also replied with, uh, we're hoping that with 4.0, the server mesh and performance will improve rendering automated turrets and security uh, much more deadly to criminals or gate campers. Interesting. That'll be good. That'll be really good. Uh, the next question is why is ATC a part of this process and the response is the ATC is there because UEE is controlling the jump point they have to give pilots permission to go through you can't attune to the Stanton or pyro jump point if you are not authorized how other jump points uh, will work is still to be determined so Here's the thing, it's weird, right? Because there's no infrastructure um, that indicates that UE has some sort of control over it, right? Right now, the way they did it is it's a natural jump point. It's just a natural wormhole. So essentially, anybody should be able to fly through. And I think if they want to apply this UE um, narrative uh, saying that it's being controlled by UE, then they should wrap it, wrap a jump gate around it like the original design i don't see any issue i don't see why they can't do that it's it's just i don't get it right if you want to apply atc to it then have something artificial that was added to humans that was added by humans to show that uh there's a control mechanism associated with that jump gate because right now it's just natural so how is atc controlling it you know does that doesn't make sense to me but uh I don't know. I don't know why they're choosing not to include the uh, the gates because I think they're pretty cool. It was uh, the next question is it was mentioned in IC that exiting the wormhole will be sort of a shotgun approach to minimize uh, collision and reduce the impact of gate camping. But how will the shotgun approach affect groups intending to coordinate their efforts? Uh, they respond with "You're not uh, coming out all over the place when exiting the jump tunnel. Everyone will." end up rather close to each other okay um, that's fair enough the next question is what if you kill a crew member or pilot during a jump and the response is if you die during the jump tunnel you will respawn at your regeneration point so if you have a ship like the ambo carrick and the regeneration point is set to uh, the carrick then i guess you should be fine uh, which is fair enough uh, the next question is can you tow ships through a jump Point. And the answer is no, you will be able to tow ships to, uh, in quantum, but not through jump points. Hmm. So, ah, uh, I think it would have been a cool idea to be able to, uh, in Pyro, you find a really cool ship that you like that is in soft death and you want to grab it, bring it over to Stanton to repair it and uh, make it your own, right? I think they need to allow us to be able to some way do that. Or for example, maybe you might need a carrier, for example, um, like a legionnaire, for example, right? I think, is it a legionnaire? No, not the legionnaire, the liberator, where you can put the vehicle on top of the landing pad uh, on the liberator. And it's as long as it's on the pad, I think it's fine. Um, but towing it, um, I guess it wouldn't work. Okay. Okay. But I, I just hope we, there is a way. Uh, to bring ships uh, with you that are no longer functional but you know because we're engineering gameplay they're going to allow us to bring uh, ships back to life um, once it's uh, surpassed its soft that uh, state so uh, it'll be cool to be able to bring to move it from one system to another as well the very next question is are there plans to introduce the big gate structures and the response is this is a narrative and creative decision we like these structures but uh, it didn't feel right for uh, how uh, we envisioned uh, jump points to work. There's no intention to bring them back at this point. Like this is, I, I don't know what their narrative, narrative reasons is. I understand the natural ones should be the transient ones where there's no gates, but the permanent ones that stay in the same place, I don't see why they couldn't put a, a wrap it with a gate just keep a gate like wrap it or, or around 
where the wormhole is with the gate i don't and i don't see why they can't just do that i don't, I don't know why because they can also like i was saying earlier uh, have a reason a narrative reason saying that this is how ue controls who can access it by that gate that gate is the atc system that controls who can uh access or interact with it with it right they can go they can go in that direction as well honestly the jump gates are super cool they're super cool and if they still want to keep that natural wormhole system they can keep that for the uh, uh let's say the wormholes that are permanent but are in uh, ue controlled areas and then the ones that are not in ue controlled areas can just remain as natural and then also the transient uh, jump points will obviously be natural as well. So I think they should have all three, right? Natural permanent, transient, as well as uh, permanent, but also have the gates wrapped around it because UEE is controlling who can access it. And the gates are the ones that dictate that. My That's my perspective on that, okay? So let's continue. The next question is, is the unified group uh, point size uh, system a permanent solution or will we see smaller medium and large jump points make a return in the future uh, and the response is the current intent is to have permanent jump point large they are the biggest jump points controlled by a jurisdiction the next question is what can you tell us about how transient jump points will be discovered in the future and the response is a jump point has a radar signature that signature will be unique exploration ships will have a greater radar allowing people to find transit jump points more easier that's going to be really cool i'm really curious to see how uh, exploration gameplay is going to work if it's anything similar to uh, eve online's exploration gameplay i think that would be really cool but i'm hoping they also innovate at the same time and uh, make it a little bit more interesting as well um, the very last question is, will transient jump points stay open long enough to log and sell their existing, their existence for profit, then reuse them multiple times? And uh, the response is yes, the jump points will stay open for hours before they collapse. This is not for for no however. Interesting. All right, you guys, let me know your thoughts on some of the things that we covered in the comments down below. Before I let you go, I'd like to let y'all know that my organization phase one industries is now recruiting new and better players if you are interested you can find our discord in the description down below don't forget to leave a like subscribe i'll catch you guys on the next one